I'm very in depth to have been invited here by the directors of the festival, Marta and Christoph, and be able to talk before you, uh, exposing some ideas and showing some work. Um, I've been requested to concentrate on my own work, not uh, on the exhibition uh, concepts. But of course, uh, later on, if you want to make any question, I will be very happy to answer. Um, we've been talking about images. We've been talking about a world composed of images. And certainly, it's been said by uh, Penelope and by Joachim and Philip, uh, we live in a world of images. So the question, the problem is how to survive in such a context. Huh? And I will, I will provide the first tip. I think that uh, the, the artist's task consists in offering a sort of uh, first aid kit about this problematic, about uh, this uh, visual landscape in which uh, we are inserted. So I understand uh, the artist's uh, responsibility as uh, a sort of uh, conspirative activity, a way to uh, provide prophylactic tools, pedagogic tools, to generate resistance toward this kind of overwhelming uh, visual world, the iconosphere. Okay? So uh, photography is a wonderful medium. It's having uh, a lot of uh, options. Uh, but I would uh, propose uh, more or less a nasty uh, classification. One would be decorative photography. And it's fine. It's about beauty. It's about expression. It's about poetry. It's about uh, uh, experimentation and so on. And uh, probably uh, it's, it's arriving, it's getting, it's fulfilling uh, the expectation of uh, many photographers. I respect that, but I'm not an expert in that field. Instead, there's a second category, which is uh, conspirative photography. Photography which provokes controversy. Photography which shakes the consciousness. Photography which uh, makes us think. Uh, let's call it somehow conceptual photography. Photography which challenges our knowledge of how we are, in which society we live, uh, which challenges uh, problems of memory, of identity, of truth, and so on. Well, this is the aspect of photography I would like to address my talk. But, as I said, uh, photography is a very rich medium, it ranges many options, it's a language, it's a culture, and uh, all, all the, the possibilities uh, should be respected and coexist peacefully with other ways. My own work has been uh, ranging for about uh, 40 years, and it's always difficult to pick up a few examples, uh, which could be a sort of complete summarize. But uh, I would say that the outline uh, has been uh, to analyze the true essence of photography. Uh, and photography could be approached by uh, different aspects. For instance, uh, Philip just talked about time, the instantaneity, the, the fact that uh, uh, in, in photography theory, the Cartier-Bressonian uh, uh, decisive moment has been a, a seminal uh, idea to uh, define what's the quintessential nature of photography if we compare with other visual representations, painting, drawings, and so on. We can capture, we can slice life and capture a precise moment. Okay? But also photography has been dealing with eternity. I mean, okay, we capture life, but we preserve it forever. And in such a way, we deal with memory, we deal, we deal with mementos, with uh, remembering, okay? So when, for instance, we talk about photography history and photography nature, uh, we usually go back to the first descriptions of uh, uh, Camera Obscura, uh, five centuries before Christ, or about the light sensibility of silver salts by the Arab alchemists, or by the development of optics during the Renaissance and so on. No? So this could be the, 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 the precedent moments of photography. But even, I think, we should go farther. 
Uh, and let me show you this example. Hmm? Uh, before Niepce and Daguerre, did photography exist? Somehow, it's depending how we define photography, how we understand the photographic uh, ontology. Hmm? Uh, I'm showing a slide of a number piece which frozen 10 million years ago the attack of a spider to a wasp. Hmm? This is a sort of snapshot. Imagine the scene. A spider was going to attack the, the wasp and suddenly a resin drop fell and fossilized the scene. If photography is defined by uh, uh, the, 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 the capture of the moment, the, 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 the freezing uh, possibility of, of uh, the, the medium, this is a kind of a proto snapshot. It's a snapshot before photography. So somehow this amber piece dated of the dinosaur period or the early Cretaceous could be considered the first photograph in history. Even if you would like, we could present it to a contest, let's say the World Photo Contest or uh, this kind of competitions and uh, they would consider it in the category of uh, nature photography. Yeah? But from the perspective of the spider and the wasp, it could be better considered war photography because <laughs> life was in conflict. Yeah? So this could be considered uh, 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 somehow photography. Let's consider another way. I mean, let's go to the future. Yeah? This is uh, ma an artist, Mark Richardson, descriptive camera. It's a, a wonderful piece of technology, as you see. It's just a, a plastic box with an optical device. And uh, it functions like a regular camera. You press the button and it creates a picture, but you don't see the picture. This picture is immediately transmitted by the internet to a crowd group who are expecting the reception of this image and describe it in a, in a very fast way and return the description to the camera. So the camera is not providing an image, but the narrative explanation of what was in the image. So imagine that I take you uh, now uh, uh, an image, uh, I focus you with a descriptive camera, and a uh, few seconds after, I get like one of these uh, registering uh, uh, cash machines in the, uh, in, the, in the supermarkets, just a, a, a small piece of paper telling I saw a crowd of uh, uh, people watching carefully, uh, very astonished to the screen, uh, something like that. So again, uh, are these photographs somehow, if the description nature is the essence of photography, this could be again the quintessential example of what a photography should look like. No? So these are the kind of uh, framework I'm interested in to challenge, to push the uh, periphery, the, 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 the uh, limits, the edges of how we consider photography. Uh, to me, the main, the main richness of photography is its proteic nature, the fact that it changes everything. When you believe that you are understanding its true nature, it's evolving immediately and it's expanding to new ways. No? One of my recent uh, interest or concerns are about the fact that uh, uh, we are changing a material photograph into an unmaterial photograph. This is the transit from, uh, from analog to uh, digital photography implies a lot of changes. One is that we are, we are transforming, there's a metamorphose from an object, uh, an image into a material support into just pure visual information. And because of that, the fetishism that we were projecting into photographs is changing. I think that uh, the, the, the fact that photographs could be touched, could be uh, handled, could be hanging in the wall, uh, generated a very uh, a special uh, impression or a, a special uh, effect on us. 
probably one of the interesting uh, aspects of photography, which is vanishing, is that uh, photography uh, less and less is a symbolical capture of the reality. It's a symbolical uh, substitution of the world. Uh, let me show this uh, with uh, small examples uh, taken from uh, popular culture. For instance, uh, film Harry Potter. Okay? Let's see this sequence. You remember uh, it's, uh, uh, Lord, Lord Voldemort is, is uh, trying to get Harry Potter and his friends and they must flee. Huh? So Hermione is going out but he's, she, she is uh, uh, at uh, her place and in order to hide herself is banishing all the family photos around. So not being in the photos means not being anywhere, not existing. It's, it's the perfect way to be hidden. And this is a, a metaphor of the way photography has been existing up to now. Uh, 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 the, the photograph has been a substitution of, of reality. And because of that, uh, it has provoked a kind of voodoo behavior. Voodoo, you know, is uh, this uh, uh, black magic uh, in the Caribbean areas in which uh, they believe that the, the action over the image will provoke a sort of action over the person that images was, was representing. No? This has been used in history for a long time. For instance, you will remember the famous photo montage in which uh, images were doctored because of ideological uh, reasons. Huh? Uh, the, here you, you see uh, uh, an anonymous uh, collective portrait taken in the 30s in which uh, you see Stalin, uh, Boroshilov, Molotov and Yehov. Huh? But suddenly the uh, unfortunate Yehov uh, was considered <laughs> not <laughs> uh, good to be in the picture and he suddenly disappeared disappeared in real life because he was executed and disappeared in the pictures. So there was a correspondence. Huh? The action, the, 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 the manipulation of uh, the, the image was a way to project a desire to change the course of history. Or again, in a more uh, complex uh, <laughs> disappearing uh, process. Huh? Here we see five people, uh, four people, three people, and two people. Huh? So actually, uh, Photography has been like a voodoo. Huh? We've been using needles or other ways, but even uh, now uh, I'm, I'm um, very obsessed with uh, a, a situation and if anyone uh, is familiar with it and has information, I will be happy to keep on collecting. I'm going to family albums in which some photographs have been aggressed. Uh, photos, family albums or uh, family photos in which uh, violence has been exerted. For instance, this is an anonymous family album I found in France, in southern France. Uh, it was just a, a shoe box full of images of a family, a bourgeois family traveling around uh, southern Europe, different countries. And uh, all the pictures have been systematically uh, uh, aggressed in such a way, producing a, a meticulous uh, cutout with a cutter. So imagine hundreds of pictures in which someone has been removed in such a sort of symbolic way, I mean, with a cutter. Huh? Uh, remove from the pictures, which means remove from history. This is a man. Huh? So we can understand the story. Maybe a betrayal, maybe an affair, a love affair, because suddenly in some pictures it's not only one cutout, but two. Huh? and it's a man and a woman. So we can project a whole love affair. We interpret the images towards that kind of situation. So uh, this is something that I'm fascinated, these kind of situations, these interactions between photography and our lives. Okay, so uh, uh, according all this uh, uh, preface, all this introduction, let me uh, present uh, a project uh, I've done dealing with uh, archive photographs. The title is Sputnik, and it deals with the, uh, the, the, the fact that the phase of history sometimes is remodeled to suit the capricious imperatives of power and its interest. This is politics, the political uh, uh, dimension 
of the uh, photography function. Hmm? This project started uh, in the, uh, in, uh, at the turn of the century. Uh, in 2003-2004, uh, when uh, Auction uh, House in New York, Sotheby's, uh, presented an auction of uh, objects which uh, were related to the uh, space race, to the 60s, when uh, US and the Soviet Union were competing to uh, arrive first on the moon. This was a very successful auction because uh, the, the American collectors and museums were very interested in uh, acquire uh, historical objects and documents from that period. Huh? Uh, at that moment, the Soviet Union uh, was in a crisis uh, period. I mean, the, in 1989, the Berlin Wall fell, and uh, this uh, changed dramatically all the political configuration of Eastern Europe, and uh, the former Soviet Union was evolving towards the contemporary Russia. But, uh, of course, there was a crisis in terms of uh, uh, institutional politics, economy, and so on. No? So uh, the, 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 the space program was a stop, and uh, a lot of um, um, families, uh, um, of, of, uh, of uh, uh, people involved in that space program uh, were eager to uh, sell uh, all kind of memorabilia, uh, photos, documents, uh, medals, and things like that. No? Well, that event in New York, uh, Sotheby's, was very uh, successful, and even it was a, a, a spectacular, it received a spectacular media coverage uh, internationally. No? Uh, this is, for instance, a press clipping from uh, the main uh, Spanish newspaper, El País. No? And uh, the, the story starts with the fact that uh, a New York uh, journalist uh, called uh, Michael Arena, who was uh, a contributor for the Wall Street Journal and who was the, the expert in uh, uh, science and uh, astronomy, who was also uh, an amateur in the history of the space race, uh, attended that uh, auction session just as a professional, just as a journalist. But uh, he realized that uh, a group of objects, uh, mainly letters, documents, stamps, commemorative material, by someone called Georgi Beregovoy, was not expensive and didn't receive any bid. So he was able to get it, he bought it. And back home, he was able to enjoy what he just bought. And the main, the main object, the main piece, was a, a vintage photograph from the uh, mid-60s of a group of cosmonauts in the Red Square just commemorating the uh, October Revolution. It was autographed by this group of cosmonauts, all they well known. At left, you have Alexei Leonov, the first man to perform uh, extravehicular activity uh, in, in the uh, late 60s. You have uh, Beregovoy, you have many others. But the third at left, was someone unknown. And the journalist, Michael Arena, was a little surprised because he was familiar with, the, with this period. He was acquainted with all the chapters of the uh, space program at that moment. I mean, he knew the rest, but this third guy was a mystery. He read the name, Ivan Istochnikov, unknown name, never heard before. But he had a sort of déjà vu. He said, I've seen this picture before. And he went to his library. He was owning the 12 volumes of Towards the Stars by Boris Tachenko, the famous uh, uh, space historian in the Soviet Union. And he took the third volume, page 232, and found the same picture. But Ivan Istochnikov was missing. Well, he said, what happened? We know that in the Stalinist period, some political leaders suddenly vanished. Hmm? Or uh, even, you know, Trotsky. Trotsky disappearing from uh, books, even from uh, school books, and, and children uh, uh, crossing his name and writing enemy of the people, things like that. But why a humble cosmonaut suffered this kind of effect? Hmm? So, of course, he thought, well, uh, that's, that's a story, that's a story. So he proposed 
his editor to devote time and some resources to travel and do research and write a piece. And that's it. What I'm going to explain now is the result of the investigation about how Ivan Stojnikov disappeared from pictures. This is disappeared from history. This is the official portrait of Coronel Pilot Ivan Stojnikov. And who is actually Ivan Stojnikov? Ivan Stojnikov, it's me. I am Ivan Stojnikov. My name, Joan von Kuberta, translated into Russian, is Ivan Stojnikov. Font Kuberta means covered fountain, or hidden fountain, or secret fountain. Huh? So why am I doing that? It's an artistic strategy. When I did that project, I mean, I, I started that project in 1990. At that moment, I was a visiting artist at the Art Institute in Chicago, and for the first time in my life, I saw powerful computers working with images. And I thought that this was going uh, to change completely the photographic language, uh, tending from a descriptive to a narrative system. Mm? And uh, at that time, uh, I wanted to do something about the history of uh, the Soviet Union, because it was very cloudy, it was very uh, mysterious. Huh? Uh, from the NASA space program, we know more or less uh, everything, even if it was sometimes uh, filtered by propaganda. But uh, from the Soviet uh, Union, uh, it was a really a, a shadowed uh, explanation of what happened. Huh? Even, even at that moment, uh, I mean, the, the, the archives were not declassified, so uh, access to information was very difficult. Huh? So I, I wanted to do that on, on that aspect. But at that moment, uh, this was a, an ambitious project. It required a lot of documentation, a lot of reading, uh, traveling to Russia and things like that, and a lot of money, a lot of uh, resources. So it took me about six years to uh, arrive to, you know, uh, <laughs> fill the, the, the puzzle. And uh, in that time, I was uh, becoming a reputation as a falsificator artist. So in case that this project would have been presented under my name, then uh, everybody could have uh, be suspicious. I mean, maybe there's a fishy, fishy story behind. So my strategy is that I present this story anonymously. I mean that uh, when the, the project is presented in museums or other contexts, uh, my name is never uh, related to the project. So how I sign it? By my face in my name translated into Russian. Uh, so I generated, I invented a non-existing foundation, which is the Sputnik Foundation, with a postal address in Moscow and an email, and I can control, I can manage the exhibition and everything, even I, I receive letters and I reply with my, you know, my official uh, papers and things, but never as being Joan von Coberta. Of course, now it's known because uh, the, the, the exhibition has been touring around, but at the beginning, of course, it was creating a, a, a sort of, of uh, mystery. Uh, it was uh, more credible for the audience. So this is somehow an installation in which photography will be the outline but which does, does a, a parody of uh, these uh, science museums, of science presentation. This means that it includes uh, uniforms, uh, rocket replicas, uh, uh, spacesuits, uh, uh, reproductions of uh, capsules, and a lot of uh, material that uh, I bought in the Russian flea markets, like uh, newspapers from the period, uh, historical photographs, and uh, different materials, like uh, old, uh, uh, Russian cameras, uh, medals, things like that. Uh, cosmonaut food that I bought in the souvenir shops in the, in the space museums in, in Moscow. But then when I came back to Barcelona, where I live, I realized that uh, the, 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 the cans were looking like uh, uh, dog food. So it, must, it was much more, it was cheaper to go to the supermarket and just buy uh, a cat or a dog food, and, and it was more or less the same. No? So the, 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 the story is threatened using photographs. And, and this is also an exercise uh, to explain the ambiguity of the photograph. So I was borrowing photos to uh, Russian families. Uh, I could have uh, a, some, some contact, for instance, students, Russian students in Western countries. Uh, I managed to, to, to meet them or in the States. 
and uh, I was borrowing specific pictures from their albums. For instance, this is a picture I don't know where, but I explained that this is the, the, uh, the, the home uh, for Ivan Stojnikov, where he was born in Kaluga, near Moscow, and so on. No? And I explained that the, the father was a, a school teacher, and that the young uh, Ivan was showing a great deal of interest in machine, uh, in flying machines and planes, so his early drawings were always uh, obsessively uh, devoted to uh, this kind of uh, materials. And then I, I reconstruct the biography. This is, I reinvent the biography. For instance, this is a picture of myself in a merry-go-round in Barcelona, and I just painted uh, the communist uh, star on, on the, the small plane. Or uh, this is me uh, joining the military academy in, in Moscow, but actually uh, this is the original photographs and uh, I mean the, the, the collage which leads to this kind of thing. This is me a little uh, older, uh, flirting with uh, farmers in Crimea, more flirting, and finally getting married with uh, Irina in the... <laughs> or here playing a Tchaikovsky piece uh, in the piano <laughs> with my sister. And here being very proud and happy because I received a pioneer uh, uh, level and actually uh, the, the, the <laughs> this is Alexei Leonov again. Hmm? And then there's a, a sort of explanation of the mystical aspect of uh, cosmonaut uh, life, uh, how it's projected socially by, by the by the propaganda uh, machinery, for instance, visiting uh, schools or hospitals and uh, being greeted, uh, things like that. So I, I do it short, but it's a complex uh, uh, photographic narrative. Huh? Or uh, learning the tricks of photography to take uh, wonderful pictures, snapshots from the space, greeting the engineers who are building my vessel, the Soyuz 2, uh, in, in the uh, co uh, Baikonur Cosmodrome, or uh, delivering a speech uh, before the engineers and the press and the uh, science academy system. This is my vessel, the Soyuz 2, ready for the launching and saying goodbye before uh, the mission and the uh, taking off, huh? crossing the dense uh, layers of the stratosphere and in orbit. Okay, so the, the story is a, is a long explanation, but uh, at, at that moment in the mid 60s, uh, as uh, the Americans and the Russians were competing to uh, get to the moon, uh, there were two different strategies. Uh, and the, the, the Soviet strategy was the Soyuz uh, program. Soyuz in Russian, you probably know, means union. And the idea was that uh, small vessels, small uh, uh, spacecraft, the, the Soyuz uh, spacecraft, should uh, establish um, orbital stations around the Earth and then uh, uh, sent uh, other vessels uh, to the moon and established an orbital, uh, an orbital station through, uh, around the moon and then finally uh, 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 land on, on the moon. But uh, this uh, um, was requiring that the docking maneuver should be performed uh, perfectly. And this was a problem at the beginning. No? So in 1967, the first Soyuz uh, in April was sent and it was a disaster. Uh, the, 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 the mission was aborted and when uh, uh, coming back uh, to the Earth, uh, the, the, the capsule didn't deploy the parachute properly and the, the, the capsule crashed and the cosmonaut Komarov died. This was a big fiasco for the propaganda interest of the Soviet Union. So soon they organized another mission uh, which should be very spectacular to make the international public opinion uh, remember that, that disaster. No? So they thought that they were going to send Soyuz 2 and Soyuz 3 with a very uh, ta a small time gap difference. They will establish in a parking orbit and then they will dock the vessels and the, the crew from one vessel will pass to the other and vice versa. Hmm? So they did that, but something happened. Hmm? Uh, there was a kind of a, uh, solar uh, wind storm, something happened, and, and the, the, the vessels lost track for a few hours. And when they reestablished the communication, Istochnikov disappeared. He was not inside the capsule, and that was a mystery. And of course, the Soviets were not able 
to uh, recognize, accept a second fiasco. So they did a kind of Machiavellic uh, maneuver. So they, they said, okay, we'll doctor all photographs in which uh, Stojnikov is appearing. We'll send Irina, the wife, to Siberia. We'll blackmail all the uh, colleagues. Uh, we'll, we'll do a pressure and a, a silence will be on the existence of Ivan Stojnikov. And that's the reason the pictures were doctored. But let's go with the story. The automatic cameras of the Soyuz 2, in which Stojnikov was traveling, captured the moment in which Stojnikov did an extravehicular activity. He went out to the space, probably to fix something. And uh, maybe that's providing uh, an idea of what would happen. But it's just speculation. We don't know exactly. We don't know exactly because they found a vodka bottle with a message in the interior, but it was never recovered. When, when we get it, probably we'll have the complete clues about what happened. Well, this is an homage to Disham. When Disham left Paris and uh, settled in New York, started publishing View magazine, uh, doing photo montage for the cover, and this was one of the first ones. I forgot something important. Uh, Istojnikov was not traveling alone. There was a dog with him. For the first time, it was uh, you know, uh, animals and, and humans in the same vessel. So Kloka, this nice dog, was uh, going with uh, Istojnikov. And even there are wonderful documents of the performing activity of Kloka and Ivan Istojnikov outside the vessel. In the installation, I include the bones that Kloka was eating just to uh, prove that uh, this is not uh, fiction, but just uh, evidence, historical evidence. Mm -hmm. And of course, my inspiration is coming from uh, comic strip, uh, uh, science fiction, and this kind of things. No? Well, the vessel was recovered without Stojnikov on board, and they found that uh, it was showing the impact of a meteorite. And this meteorite is included in the installation, but uh, there's a warning uh, sign uh, because uh, this meteorite is having some radioactivity properties and there's a sign, please, uh, pregnant women and uh, persons with a peacemaker uh, don't, don't uh, uh, come close because it can be dangerous because uh, uh, geologists have proved that uh, this meteorite is composed of kryptonite that, you know, is a dangerous substance not existing in the earth, so keep away. And a lot of people get frightened at that. That's very funny. Yeah. Well, regarding the pictures, I, I borrow pictures from uh, space uh, agencies, the NASA in, in, in the States or the Sof, uh, Soviet uh, photo in, 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 in Russia. And I use some pictures to uh, outline the story. But sometimes I, I did myself the pictures, for instance. This is just a pancake at home in the kitchen uh, with the proper light and, and the flower and, and, and all the materials that you have uh, in a very domestic way. So when, when you establish a credibility framework, everything is possible. Uh, everything is possible. Or for instance, this. This is looking very scientific, but you are now looking at a flying potato. Uh? <laughs> I don't want to fool people in the exhibition. I want people to uh, watch critically and understand how photographs are not uh, uh, literal transcriptions of the real, but just constructions. So from time to time, I include some keys, some clues. For instance, from time to time, you will find this picture uh, among the others. Huh? So these are the robots from the Star Wars films. Huh? And when doing the installation, uh, in the opening, I keep aside in a more or less uh, discreet way, and present myself as uh, one of the collaborators, uh, an expert in the photographic uh, aspect of the exhibition. Instead, I request uh, someone uh, from the local university, um, language school, someone speaking Russian, for instance, uh, that was in Madrid in 1997, and I present her as uh, Elena Kondakova, the president of the Sputnik Foundation, who came here just for the opening and to deliver a welcome speech. No? And for a long time, uh, this lady is uh, providing a very long and boring speech with an interpreter. 
And during the event, uh, she's having a champagne uh, glass and speaking Russian to everybody. Uh, so it's a sort of performance. In order to do, prepare the exhibition, I was uh, using a lot of uh, original historical books about uh, the, that period. And I did my own one, uh, which is in, in Russian and English. And uh, my name is never there. And uh, it's starting as a, a formal publication uh, with all the patrons of the, of the Sputnik Foundation. If you read carefully, you will meet uh, between the patrons, the Karamazov brothers or many important people. Or, uh, well, there are a lot of tricks. It's, it's really an artist book, a lot of, a lot of elements that, uh, that uh, you should uh, discover. Huh? But uh, the, the, the book is distributed, and I'm fascinated when I, uh, I, I, I find uh, copies uh, of the book uh, in public libraries uh, classified in history of Russia or <laughs> history of cosmonautics. <laughs> this means that the librarian said, oh, this is about uh, rockets, so that way. Huh? That's fine. But uh, this exhibition is about how photography transmits uh, information. So uh, sometimes uh, the strategy consists on uh, convincing uh, journalists and editors to publish that story as a true uh, reportage, as a journalistic uh, presentation of what happened. And sometimes I've been successful to convince editors to do so, and it's wonderful, it's wonderful. Because for instance, this was a, a, a magazine, in, in, um, a weekly uh, magazine with a, a newspaper in Madrid, and uh, there was uh, that, and at the end there was just this, and um, last, last uh, news about uh, that event, and then if you go to that page, there's an explanation, but most of people don't go to that page, so they should uh, confront themselves about the information which is provided. Huh? So I'm doing a lot of uh, experiments like that. Another system consists on sending letters to the editor of, of the newspaper, also provoking a lot of controversy about that. Or uh, my favorite one is uh, in summertime when uh, journalists are on holidays and there are only interns without experience, I sent uh, press, uh, press releases and press uh, about the, 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 the story of Ivan Stojnikov and I send it and sometimes uh, they publish without any uh, critical filtering. Hmm? Well, it's, it's a very long uh, story, but uh, if today uh, you uh, look in uh, Google for Ivan Stojnikov, which is an invented name, you will find about uh, 427,000 entries huh? of, of an invented name. Hmm? And uh, uh, this is like a, a, I mean a, a trap, uh, because it's there. And uh, some people not being acquainted with the project can still believe it. And I'm amazed by some of the consequences. For instance, there was a, a pop music group in Madrid who visited the installation and got fascinated by the story of the dog lost in space and things like that. And <laughs> they devoted a complete, a complete uh, record with songs about uh, the epic uh, and the poetry of, of, of uh, that, or uh, a TV program. They, they were doing a, a monographic special on mysteries of space, and they found the book and also believed it and, and uh, broadcasted the story as being uh, true. And it was a, a big scandal, of course, because a, a lot of, uh, uh, well, uh, <laughs> of viewers uh, called saying, but you are crazy. I mean, this is just uh, an artist project, things like that. Huh? So. This is a, 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 a line in which I've been working, uh, uh, which confront uh, the viewer with one of the seminal aspects of photography, which is credibility, which is truth. Uh, in, in the age of analog photography, truth was an obsession. In the age of digital photography, truth is an option. Uh, but let's go to uh, the age of, uh, of uh, digital photography. Let me show briefly, because time is running, uh, another project uh, titled Holy Innocence. Probably uh, you suffer, as everybody, the problem of uh, spam uh, in, uh, in uh, uh, garbage uh, mail that uh, tries to sell anything and so on. Well, uh, I collect spam. It's a wonderful <laughs> material to work with. And uh, among spam, my favorite is scam. I mean, those uh, messages uh, which try to uh, forge a situation in which uh, they, they try to get money from you. There are two main systems. One is uh, the girls 
from uh, Eastern European countries trying to get a husband in, <laughs> in Western countries. So they sent uh, you know, uh, an email uh, with a portrait saying, uh, my name is uh, 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 Daria uh, from Russia, and uh, I want, uh, I've seen your profile in Facebook, and I think that we can be uh, uh, close friends. Uh, uh, and, and if you respond, if you reply this message, uh, you establish a sort of uh, friendly communication, and at a certain point, uh, this supposed uh, girl, because of course these are just, uh, you know, a kind of um, uh, the scammers, huh? uh, and mostly they are male, uh, they, they will, she, she will tell you, she will propose, I would like to come and visit you, but I have no money for the ticket, huh? so please send me, send me the money, and if you send the money, you will forget about uh, this. So this is very interesting, and I collect these kind of situations, but the, the project I'm dealing with uh, was wonderful because it's the second category of a scam, which is the Nigerian letters. The Nigerian letters always uh, follow the same pattern, the same pattern, and it's that uh, uh, someone uh, approach you saying, well, uh, I'm the son of former president of uh, blah, 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 and my father has been killed, but he's having uh, millions in Switzerland, and I'm looking someone to help me uh, to, to uh, use that money and do investments, and uh, again, uh, you've been recommended by uh, uh, someone I cannot tell you, but uh, you are a trustful person, and you will get uh, you know, a lot of money if you can help me, okay? Well, in this case, it was very nice, because I received uh, one of these scam letters, by someone who was called Captain Hook from the US uh, Army uh, in Iraq. I said, Captain Hook? Wow, that's, that's a fancy name. <laughs> but uh, I thought, okay, I'll, I'll go on. This is a fiction. I, I know, I'm aware that uh, this guy is trying to fool me, but uh, I know, so I will fool him first. Okay? So there are two fictions uh, facing one to the other. So I said, okay. Uh, What's your story? Okay, he said, well, uh, I'm in, uh, in Baghdad and uh, we found in a container, and he provides the, the press clipping, a lot of money probably from uh, Iraqi officers uh, who fleeing uh, were not able to, to take the money, a lot of millions in dollars, in euros, in everything. No? And uh, this is now, I, I took some of the money and uh, I offer you uh, part of this money if you help me to do something with it. Okay, yes, yes, absolutely, I'm willing to do that. Uh, it's a big business, but uh, I mean, uh, you just approach me anonymously and give me proof that you are right, that you, you are telling the truth. Send me a photograph of the money, and he sent me this picture. <laughs> <laughs> okay, said, okay, okay, we are going in the right way, we are going the right way, but uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a very pixelated picture. I don't see if this is uh, real money or just photocopy, so please send me a close-up. And he sent me a close-up. <laughs> more close-up, more close-up. Okay, said, okay, now I believe you, so I'll tell you. I'm a priest in Barcelona, and I'm in charge of the Sagrada Familia, family family. And this is a famous historical building, and uh, we are trying to finish with the construction, but we... <laughs> We have no money enough, so your money will be right for that. Huh? So we established a, 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 a dialogue, and he said, okay, but uh, now uh, I show you my face, uh, uh, show me your face, and he sent me his passport. Huh? And then, well, okay, but how I can believe that uh, this money is consigned in that place, as, uh, again, it's, the, it's a story, no? So he sent me documents of the, 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 the money was there. Huh? So, when I had about uh, 96 exchanges, I said, okay, I have the book done. Let's finish it. And then I sent an email saying, I'm sorry, but the Vatican uh, discovered our affair and they want to handle all, all the business directly, so bye-bye. No? And, and I did a book about that. No? I did a book which is having a sort of a design device because uh, it's printed in red and green color and the, the book is offering uh, filters in this color. So according to the filter you, you put, you have the truth or the fiction. You have one face or the other. Huh? And it's a, a kind of a publication I'm very happy with, uh, which is relating to this kind of uh, the, the, the creation of avatars and fictional identities 
in the age of internet. Huh? Let me go on fast because, again, time is running. Google Grams is a, a project in which I establish a sort of a, a parallel uh, identity between uh, mosaics 3,000 years before Christ and uh, digital photography. I mean, the, the image structure is the same. Recently, uh, an American uh, student, uh, graduate student at uh, MIT, uh, discovered the photomosaic software uh, in 1996, uh, which consists on uh, creating uh, images out of thousands of tiny uh, cells, tiny, tiny tiles. Uh. And years later, there was another software, which is freeware, everybody can use it, uh, created by Frank Midley, uh, which is uh, a, a photomosaic system in which uh, you don't need a directory full of images. You don't need an image bank. You just connect your computer to the internet and through the Google image search mode, you can type some words and all the images connected to those words can be used to uh, generate your mosaic. So this is uh, wonderful because uh, this means that you can establish uh, works in which you uh, explore the relationship of text and images. No? For instance, uh, this is the first uh, photo in history, the one taken by Nicephor Nieps in 1927. No? So I just type the word photo. No? So uh, 10,000 images responding to the tag photo were included in this photo mosaic. So if you go close, no? you will see the whole universe of photography, art photography, photojournalism, advertising photography, weddings, uh, children, pornography, whatever. Everything is there. So the first picture, including everything which came later. Or let's see how I work. For instance, this is a, an historical mosaic, a Roman mosaic, and uh, I use uh, as a search words all uh, the, the, the the symbols that the Medius uh, is, is, could, is, is having. No? So that, that was the, the result. Or the Courbe origin of the world. Mm? And the search words were Big Bang, Black Hole, and Dark Matter. Mm? And this is what you have. Mm? Or this is the Leonardo Last Supper. And the search words are all the chefs awarded with three star Michelin guide. <laughs> So if you, you look careful, you, you will see all, all the famous chefs. Or, uh, not in a humoristic vein, but in a more political way, uh, this is the famous Abu Ghraib uh, torture picture. And the, 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 the words were all the people involved in the affair, politicians, military, civilians, and so on. So again, if you look carefully, you will find all the faces of people involved. Or metaphorical. Uh, this is a homeless, and this is made with uh, the 25 uh, richest persons in, in the world. Huh? So uh, the, the, the poorest and the richest. Huh? And I'm explaining that to uh, go to a recent project, which was uh, an assignment uh, in a, a small village in northern Spain. Uh, and they, they uh, requested a site-specific um, project. Huh? And I thought that this... Uh, procedure, this uh, system, was going to be very suitable. Mm? So this is a, a, a village called Sahazarra, famous for uh, the, the medieval castle and the vineyards. It's in the Rioja region, famous for the, for the wine. And after doing some research, I found that uh, there was a nice story there. Uh, they have a bell, which is called the uh, Moorish Princess Bell. And there's a story. In medieval times, there was a war between uh, Muslims and Christians. And when Sahazarra was in the frontier of, of uh, the, the, the two uh, areas, uh, Moorish princes uh, wanted to become Christian and tried to get the baptism in different uh, villages. But uh, she was always refused. Only in Sahazarra they accepted. And uh, to acknowledge that, she donated a bell to the town, to the, to the village. Huh? And still now, uh, there's a bell, which is a, a kind of a remembering of this gesture of tolerance, of, uh, I mean, uh, welcoming, and so on. Hmm? 
So uh, I wanted to do a, a mural which uh, would uh, remember that uh, story, that uh, legend. Hmm? And in order to show that, to do so, uh, I, I um, in connection with the municipality, uh, I ask uh, the families in uh, Sahazarra to provide their family albums and together with some assistance, I would reproduce uh, or scan everything without exception, no discrimination at all, and will compose a kind of mosaic of thousands of pictures will, which would remain there and will be available as a, a, an archive of a popular memory. But again, with all these pictures, I was to compose a mosaic which would be made in photoceramic system. Eh? Photoceramic is uh, the, the procedure that uh, you use usually in cemeteries for uh, dead people because it's the, the most resistant to rain, to ice, to cold, to whatever. So it's absolutely permanent. Hmm? So I did a photo mosaic uh, using the bell as the model, but using all the elements, all the pictures of those, uh, those villages. Hmm? And that's, that's how it looks like in the, in the, main, in the main church. So the sort of uh, digital <laughs> face, Facebook eh, done in, 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 that, uh, in that village. Uh, this is a, a permanent uh, piece. Uh, this means that uh, uh, it will be there forever. And uh, it's uh, a way in which uh, all the inhabitants of the village share experience and rememberings and uh, uh, stories uh, of, of the past. No? And I arrived to the last project, very recent. I just opened it um, uh, three weeks ago in a museum in Spain. And the title is Gastropoda. Gastropoda is the Latin uh, terminology for uh, snails and, and this kind of uh, animals. No? And this is uh, about uh, the metabolism of photographs, of the metabolism of uh, photographs. I believe that uh, uh, photographs uh, have a life. Uh, they are born, they evolve, they decay, then die, and sometimes they are recycled and be transformed. I mean, uh, Penelope or uh, Joachim yesterday, they, they uh, uh, taught us how to transform, how to uh, recycle those images into new lives. Hmm? So the origin of this project is because I live in the countryside, not in Barcelona in the center, but about 30 kilometers, in a very humid region. And I have my post box outside the house. Uh, and uh, if uh, I'm not uh, going there very often, uh, snails come and eat the paper. Hmm? So uh, nowadays, which kind of mail you have on the post office? Uh, invoices and... <laughs> invitation cards. The rest is coming through email, electronic mail. No? So this means that I'm not uh, really uh, hurrying up to, to, to take my mail uh, brought by the post. So uh, if I last a little bit, uh, the snails come and, and do, the, do, do my work, uh, do, do the artistic work, which is this kind of transformation. No? And this is something which is very interesting for me uh, in the sense that uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's dealing, at one hand, by uh, this uh, illustration of the life and the metabolism, hmm? uh, the, the, the transformation, or, or this, this idea of uh, images having a biological life as well, but also about authorship. Who are the authors of the images which are generated in this decaying process? Myself or the snails? Hmm? I'm very interested in animal photography. I've been collecting information about that. Huh? For instance, uh, dog photographers, cat photographers, elephant photographers, cow photographers. There are a lot of, and I've been myself working with uh, these ideas. Huh? But in this case, I having uh, snail slaves working for me. I mean, hunger snails who are creating this kind of pieces, mm -hmm. which are just the remains, the leftovers of those invitation cards uh, when uh, there's just uh, the, 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 the sheet of the snail and, and the eaten paper. Uh, for instance, uh, this is a Eugen Smith famous uh, picture. I don't know if you are able to reconstruct the missing parts. This is a Western. 
And this is the installation of the current presentation of this, uh, of this project in a museum where you see a terrarium with the uh, snails uh, currently uh, eating, eating the, the, the invitation cards. Uh, so it's a sort of a confrontation of contrast because uh, you have uh, here the, the, the remains are just uh, waste, but uh, these remains uh, presented uh, in the museographic, uh, beautiful way, elegant way, with frame, with a nice print, and so they became so-called art. Huh? So it's a sort of parody of how art is, is uh, mainly uh, an issue of uh, uh, mise en scène, uh, an issue of, uh, of a rhetorical display somehow. Huh? And uh, with that uh, project, I will finish. Uh, thank you for, for your attention. And uh, as I said before, I'm able to uh, reply any question, whether about uh, this kind of work, whether about the exhibition. Thank you very much for your attention.